Welcome to Christiana Flourish, where we motivate you with God's word. The NSPP Day Pastor Jerry has celebrated your 40th anniversary. But how did Pastor Jerry become Pastor Jerry? This is his life story. Watch the video to the end and subscribe to the channel for more updates. Years ago, I remember the reason one of the things that the Lord used to kickstart our prayer life. Then they, they used to call it prayer warriors. I was in the prayer warriors department. And I, and I went in and I, and I had this. The, the, you know, those were days when our church was a church. Our local church, right, was a place where they brought all kinds of people who were sick, all kinds of people who were maimed, all, all kinds of people. And then they brought one mad girl. Her name was Felicia. I don't forget her name. Her name was Felicia. And they brought Felicia to church. Mad girl. So my pastor's wife called me that day. I mean, we're all in the prayer department. And he said to me, Jerry, this, this is your case. Pray for Felicia. Felicia. Pray for Felicia. I said, no problem. I know that. And then I summoned up courage. I was a lot younger than this. And then I went, summoned up courage to go and pray for Felicia. As I was approaching Felicia, she started laughing. She started smiling. And then on top of it, Felicia said, and I'm sorry for those who didn't hear it, but, but let me say the way she said it in Hebrew. He said, last one there. Last one there. Last one there. I was looking at Felicia. And then she told the guy, Sorry, what it means in e e English is that if you come close, I will beat the hell out of you. And all that. And then I was looking, I said, shut up in Jesus' name. She stood up and began to chase me. And that's how I ran out of the church. But you know, the very striking part of it is that my pastor's wife, she will show up. And Felicia will want to look for somewhere to go and hide. She would show up and Felicia would go. I was so depressed. And I looked at her and I said to her, Ma, how come whenever you come, Felicia will go and look for somewhere to hide? When I come, Felicia will be asking me to come. What is why? I said, Ma, why? Ma, why? And she looked at me and they said, Jerry, there are ashes on your altar. Go and clear the ashes on your altar. And you, oh, God bless that woman wherever she is. She said, There are ashes on your altar. Go and clear the ashes on your altar. I said, oh God, these were days when I showed up in church and everybody, I didn't know where it came from because she had a high opinion of me before that time. You know, the truth of the matter is that may situations not reveal your emptiness. That is the prayer. May situations not come to reveal how much of capacity you don't have. And people of God, this was the, exactly the same thing that happened to the disciples of Jesus and Jesus himself. The Bible said prior to the healing of a particular a man's child, that Jesus had given them power and said to them, go. Go and lay hands on the sick. Go and heal the people. And the Bible said that lay their hands wherever they went to miracles were happening. All of a sudden, Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And then the Bible says that the man ran to him. I said to him, I brought this guy to your disciples. I brought this guy to And they could not cast out the spirit from this guy. Look at this guy. I brought him to your disciples. And the disciples looked at Jesus. I'm sure they would have looked at Jesus in frustration. And they would have asked themselves, I'm sure the first thing that drew them to that guy was that this is what we've been used to. This is what we've been doing all this while. What changed? What changed? What they didn't realize was that there are, you see, the truth of the matter is that you cannot use, I pass my neighbor generator to power this house. You can't, you can't. And, and that is the way it is. Some of us have the destinies that look like this house. And you are trying to power it with, I pass my neighbor generator. Child of God, your destiny will shut down your generator. And this is the reason why when a man knows what he carries, he carries a prayer altar that sustains it. When a man understands where, how far, and where God is taking him, there can never be any reign of the Spirit without prayers. The Bible says that the apostles were gathered together in one room and they were praying. And they were praying. As they were praying, the Bible says there was a sound like that of a mighty rushing wind. And after that, glowing tongues of fire fell upon their head. And child of God, back to my story. I, 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 I returned back. And I told my mom, she's late now. And I told my mom, look at what pastor's wife said. And she said, yes, that nobody sleeps in the night and goes to confront demons in the morning. And my mother says, ask me in prayer. And then we started. I said, except you help me, come and help me. Let's be doing it. And my mother woke me. I was a lot younger. You have no idea how young I was. And then we started praying. I said, pray. I said, pray. He was a struggle initially. It was a struggle initially. And my whole pastor's wife, when I was leaving church that day, she called me. She said, remember what Jesus told his disciples. I said, what did he say? He said, remember. remember. He said to them, you cannot even stay with me even for one hour. He said, the minimum is one hour. He said, yeah, 
neighbor i have not even effectively achieved 15 minutes and then you are stretching it to one hour he said please i want you to know that the spirit is about to give you utterance hold on day shaba child of god there's a place of prayer where you are not the one praying but prayer is praying you until the lord transitions you to that place where you are not the one recalling your mother in a civil ashiada because you don't have no idea what you are carrying on the sebala if you will just allow the lord you know the truth is that we cannot be crying and say lord let things change and the lord is saying the people who are crying do not have the capacity to carry what i'm about to pour out they don't have the capacity to carry what i'm about to pour out and child of god i return i did that prayer for a long time remember felicia was scared of my pastor's wife but felicia was still not healed Felicia was running up and down wherever my pastor's wife showed up. Felicia would run around, but Felicia was still not here. A child of God. I can pray. I can even understand. I can, of course, because Felicia was always looking out for me in church. Always looking out for me. No matter how many persons are in church, Felicia will spot me out. So there's a way the church is. So I started staying in a place where Felicia will not see me. So and I stayed there and nobody, I mean, that was the only way I could have peace. Do you know because of Felicia, I could not come to church. I could not come to church someday because I don't know whether they did her madness towards me. Because everywhere I am, Felicia will, you know the shocking part of it. Let me let you know the shocking part of it. I come in and Felicia has not seen me. And Felicia from wherever she is, she will start calling me last one. Last one. Last one. So and I'm like, she hasn't seen me. How did she know me? I knew that this one was a demon trying to drill me and trying to embarrass me and trying to intimidate me for no reason. So I stayed away. One day I walked into church, sat down. Felicia began to shout. She hadn't seen me. He said, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle. And she started shouting. So she told me, told me, it's because of you that she's shouting. Uncle. There is prophecy over Uncle. you. And the devil told me, don't near her. Uncle. And another one said to me, go and see. And then I turned, she told, and then got to her. So the more she cited me, she shouted, hey. How I respond? How I came inside me? I say, you evil spirit. She shouted more. I say, hey, it has happened. So, and I approached her, I, I came close, I said, listen, your time is over. Your time is over. A part of me was scared. A part of me was saying, continue to do what you're doing. And not the righteous is as bold as a lion. Even though I am not so convinced that it is me that she's shouting about. But I shall know that I've been praying all this while. I said, God, please do it for me. And if you do it for me. And child of God, I spoke. And Felicia fell and woke up saying. Could it be the reason why there has not been the outpouring is that because there's no man. The Bible says, I sought for a man. I sought for a man. And, and he couldn't find a man. I sought for a man. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on what God wants to make out of your life. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on how much God wants to stretch and make man. May you not carry the destiny of a time bomb and you end up like a knockout. You never, let it never be said. You were more than this in life. May it never be said. 